Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out Elegoo's Neptune 3 FDM printer. So let's get started. Now I do want to thank Elegoo for sending this over to me. And this is one of the latest lineup of their FDM printers. And everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. One of the biggest features about this printer that I've probably mentioned in the thumbnail is their 16 point auto leveling from the nozzle. So it's not like BL touch or CL touch where it's off to a side by 20 millimeters or something like that. You are directly getting the auto leveling directly from the nozzle itself. So it's spot on precision. You only have to calibrate it like once after you move the printer or do something to a printer. It's a quick calibration process and it goes through all 16 points and then you can manually correct it by sliding a piece of paper and adjusting the height where it should be. Once that auto leveling is performed, everything you print out of that will have those corrections. So the first thing I printed was something big. I'm not big as in tall, but more big as in wide, which is this little sample right over here. So this is a little note that I was gonna send to my wife. And there you go. And it also has a glow in the dark filament which I will explain a little bit later on why I decided to use this filament over uh, the normal filament that I have. Now I also printed another thing that was this little F-14 jet fighter. And this is one of those puzzles that you could put together and it turns into like a little aircraft, which looks pretty cool. And one of the things that I, why I wanted to print it is because it's as flat as it can be on the surface and it's pretty wide on the surface just to see if everything was leveled out. And yeah, it was. I didn't have to do any adjustments. All I had to do was the calibration and that is it. So currently this is my favorite FDM printer on the lineup that I have with either the Ender 5 or the Neptune 2 or the BiQ. This is by far my favorite right now because of that 16 point auto leveling. To talk more about the printer itself, it does have a print size of 220 by 220 by 280 height, which is slightly bigger than the Neptune 2. Uh, it also has a flexible bed, but this thing is metal and it's a little um, solid, you could say. It's not as flexible as the ones you would find on the Enders where it's more flexible and a magnetic bed. This is more of a metal flexible bed. So it's a little hard to get pieces off of, but also very hard to attach to this bed because it's, it's so strong in the magnet. Now you also get fine adjustment points where you could just rotate these nozzles and you could get more tension on the belt, either the X and the Y. And there is no way to actually level this bed itself. It's set onto this one point and that is it because the uh, auto leveling will take care of the rest, which is something I really like. But just keep in mind, anytime you do move this printer, I would recommend just recalibrating it, which only takes like two minutes. Now I'm gonna show you a sample of how it looks like on a time-lapse of printing these words, which is I love you. And I'm also gonna show you a quick time-lapse of uh, printing this jet fighter. Either which, they both came out perfect. I didn't have to worry about one side being more crushed than the other because, due to leveling. So it worked out really, really well. Now, as far as the Bowden extruder, it does have a dual gear setup. So it actually resolved this problem of this blue filament that I got. So this is a glow and dark filament. For some reason on the Neptune 2, the single gear extruder sometimes would slip and it wouldn't come out perfect. So I wasn't able to actually print glow in the dark filament, especially this brand on the Neptune 2 because it kept slipping on the gear, but I didn't have any issues with the dual gear setup on this one. That's why I tested this filament. Now it also uses all silent steppers, which is the, I think the TC2225 or TN2225. Uh, I'll leave it right over here. But uh, along with the Neptune 2, the Neptune 3 also has all silent drivers, including the extruder and also everything else. So it's extremely quiet. As I recommended in the previous video of Neptune 2, the only thing that makes noise really is the power supply. So if you do have a chance, I would replace that 40 millimeter fan with something with a Noctua and this thing would be completely silent. Now the shipping and the setup process was extremely simple. Uh, the Neptune always shipped in a really nice box setup where I didn't have to worry about parts moving. Now also when you are taking this apart, unlike the Neptune 2, um, the rail and everything is pre-assembled. Uh, the wires are already pre-connected. So when you take it out of the box, you got to make sure that you are taking the bottom piece and the rails all together at the same time because the wires are connected. Installing it only required four screws to install the, uh, the Z-axis onto the build plate and you are done. Everything else is just about installing this handle or installing the, um, the filament holder. 
So the process of installing this was a little bit easier than installing the Neptune 2. This also includes a removable touchscreen that allows you to control this. And I do find the little intro that it comes with is pretty cool for the Elegoo. Now, as far as the software goes, it does come with Cura and it's their own special version of Cura that has the default settings on this. Now, when I did print this the first time using the default settings of this um, thing, which is the I love you, there was some stringing, which I figured it would have because of the retraction rate at 45 millimeters. Generally on the first printer on the Neptune 2, I think I had to adjust it to 60 to get rid of the stringing, which is probably the same as the Neptune 3. So the default settings are good. It could probably be narrowed down a little bit more just for the retraction settings to get all the stringing to go away. Otherwise, I just left everything as default. If you're able to back up the settings, you could probably back the settings up to the newer Cura 5, which I haven't tried yet, but I am using the pre-shipped Cura that they sent with the USB. Now, as far as parts come, they generally give you everything that you need to operate this 3D printer, which is the Allen keys, screwdrivers, wrenches. It also includes USB cable, zip ties just in case you have these free flowing if you want to uh, nail them down extra nozzle heads just in case something goes wrong and you have to replace the nozzle head all in all i had no problems using this uh, this was probably one of the easiest printers i ever had to set up because i didn't have to build the whole thing together like the neptune 2. Uh, all it was was really four screws to get this up and going and i didn't have to worry about too much on leveling because it does the auto level uh, the auto level is extremely accurate. Like I said earlier, I did tilt the bed. I actually put some washers to kind of make it crooked and it was still able to print perfectly. That's what I printed this with, the F14. The bed was completely crooked and it was still able to get it out. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you have any questions about the Neptune 3, let me know down in the comments below. If not, you could also join my Discord. I'll be on there just to chit chat with you guys if you guys are interested in asking more questions because I can't get to the comments on YouTube. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.